Carolina. And Josh Brown here at williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. The Gamecocks getting set to take on the Owls of Florida Atlantic. The head coaches for tonight's ball game, Howard Schnellenberger, now in his sixth year with FAU, 28 and 33, 22 years overall as a head coach, and 128 victories. And of course, on the opposite sideline, another man who made a name for himself in the state of Florida, Steve Spurrier, now in his second year with the Gamecocks, nine wins, six losses, two and one this year, and looking for a victory in this ball game and a convincing one before a big time stretch of six consecutive SEC games. Series history, it will not take us long to uh, go over those numbers. First ever meeting between the two schools. Kickoff is fielded inside the five. It's Carlos Thomas, sheds a tackler at the 20. Busted outside the 40, the 45, past midfield and down at the 47-yard line of Florida Atlantic, a 51-yard return by the sophomore, Carlos Thomas. You see here, Mike, uh, Coach Chatham coming through in a big way on special teams. Got Carlos Thomas back there, one of the fastest guys on the team. Finds a hole and gets a good return for the Gamecocks. First down and 10 for Carolina from the 47, Savelle Newton is the starting quarterback and Taylor Rank is the starting tailback five yards behind him. They fake it to him, now Newton gonna be sacked behind the line of scrimmage. A slow developing play and not enough time. Sincere number 45 out of Bell Glade, Florida, Glade Central with the sack. Hutch Eckerson, William Brown, Chris White, some of the starters on that offensive line and the skilled players, a big addition to uh, this week's Starting 11, talking about Andy Boyd. Andy Boyd, uh, Coach Spurrier is excited to get him back. A solid performer for him up front. Someone that he can run behind and establish a good block for him. Mo Brown into the game for Carolina. One of the three wideouts on this formation. Second down and 16. Newton fires over the middle. Complete to Sidney Rice on a square in. Right near the marker. Should have the distance for the first down. So Sidney Rice picking up where he left off last week where he had over 100 yards receiving. Eric McIntosh with the tackle after an 18-yard gain. Well, Mike, right here, Spell Newton got plenty of time, and when you give him plenty of time, he's going to step back there. And who else to throw it to but Sidney Rice? First and 10 from the Owls, 35 yard line. Two receivers to the left for Newton. Again, going to go to the air. Again, under hot pursuit. Flushed out to the right side. Newton going to tuck it and run and gets lassoed out of bounds after a modest gain. And there's George Allen getting his first start of the year. Andre Clark unable to go for the Owls due to a high ankle sprain. The defense for Florida Atlantic, one of the worst statistically in the country. They do have a heck of a player on the line in Gervonta Jackson, an all Sun Belt performer. He's number 92, uh, but the back seven for this defense, Josh, has been an issue. Second down and nine yards to go, trips to the left. Newton gives it off to Taylor Rank. That's his first collegiate carry, and it's a good one. Finally dragged down by Acevedo of the Florida Atlantic secondary, a secondary which returns just one starter. They've been tested early and often this year, and so far teams have been able to throw very well against them. So that'll set up a third down and Jeff, three. Jeff, that's Rob DeBoer right there. You know, Mike, uh, Carolina's already getting a good jump. Uh, you can tell this week they've been practicing of getting up the line and getting ready for the next play. Newton on the keeper, the left side, going to be real close to the marker, needs the 25. And by the time he was upended by Josh Pinnock, he's right around the marker. But might be a little bit short, could be a fourth down at inches here. And actually be fourth down in a couple of feet after that spot, and the Gamecocks will go for it. You can tell already, Mike, that Coach Spurrier coming out here is going to set the tone for the offense. Carolina one out of four this year on fourth down. Stafford and Rank in the eye. Stafford has no career carries, and Taylor Rank has one. 
Fourth down and one. Newton back to pass. Throws it off his back foot. Dangerous pass intercepted at the 11. And now a fumble on the play. Loose football and recovered by Carolina. Recovered by Carolina on a crazy play. That's Hutch Eckerson after the Ricky Bethel interception. Hutch Eckerson recovers the fumble, but a penalty flag is on the play. It'll be interesting to see what the call is here, Mike. It's back here uh, on the uh, initial hit on Savelle. Steve Spurrier anxiously awaiting this call. This is a big one right here. Sidney Rice, passer, a little bit number gimpy. Number 45, defense. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And the penalty is on Florida Atlantic, so Carolina will keep the football and get some real estate out of the play as well. Again, on that last play, Sidney Rice running off the field a little bit gimpy. He is not in the game. Nope, there he is now. Joined by... Kenny McKinley and Mo Brown as you take another look, Josh. Yeah, there's Sidney Rice just coming back and making a good play. You like to see guys that are aware and know what to do in those type of situations. First down and 10 from the 13. Rank swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. That's Randy Hunter, number 99, a sophomore out of Miami. Had a sack against Oklahoma State for an 18-yard loss last week. This FAU defense, not very good statistically, certainly a lot bigger than the defense that we saw a week ago in Wofford. Wofford, a scrappy bunch. They were able to get pretty good pursuit with a three-man line and an undersized line. FAU's big, just not very good so far. And a penalty flag before the ball is ever snapped. It'll be second down and long when we return. 11.02 remaining in the first quarter of play of a scoreless game on CSA. At williams Bryce Stadium, 10.39 remaining in the first quarter of play. And Carolina leading Florida Atlantic, 7-0. The scoring drive, that's a Steve Spurrier-type drive. Seven plays, 47 yards. Newton, 23 yards through the air to Sidney Rice. And that's the kind of... Uh, pass play that we were expecting to see more of through the first three, four games of the year, Josh. That's right, Mike, and you know, Florida Atlantic, if they're smart, they will not single cover Sidney Rice anymore, so uh, hopefully uh, they'll make that change for the, their better chances of trying to win this game. So Ryan Suckup will have the kickoff. Over half of his kickoffs this year have reached the end zone. Very few returns. Suck up, gets that strong leg into it, goes all the way back to the end zone, and the Florida Atlantic receiver, that's Eric McIntosh, wisely takes a knee. So the Gamecocks getting what they want out of their first series. As you take a look at Sean Clayton, the starting quarterback, he's still looking for his first touchdown pass of the year. This Florida Atlantic offense only has one touchdown on the season. That's right, Mike, and like I said before, uh, he's going to have to get it done through the air to find out whether or not they're going to be able to win this game because only averaging one and a half yards coming into this game. Short carry there by Charles Pierre as we look at the starting lineups for the Florida Atlantic Owls. Their offensive line has... Uh, been a trouble spot so far this year, Josh. Yeah. Second down, seven yards to go. Carolina showing a five-man front. It's Clayton from the pocket, takes a hit, throws a one-hopper incomplete at the 34-yard line. You know, going back to what you said, Mike, about the offensive line, if you don't get anything done up front, you aren't going to be able to establish uh, offense. Defense for the Gamecocks. That linebacking core has really picked it up here lately. Dakota Walker gets his first start of the year in the secondary, led by Fred Bennett, the All-American. Stoney Wood.
Woodson getting a start for Carolina as well. Tyro Nix, the man to lead that Carolina defense, which has been criticized a bit this year for the inability to stop this right here, the running game. Look at this, a huge hole for the quarterback, Clayton, still on his feet, past the 40, into the secondary, and down past the 30-yard line as flags come all over the place. That will likely be a face mask, but Sean Clayton, not exactly fleet of foot, but gets a 47-yard run on that play. Sean Clayton. Face mask, number five, defense. Michigan five yard State. penalty, and there's first the face down. mask penalty, five more yards, Josh. You see, like I said before, the offensive line, they're getting it done up front. Once you get it done up front, your backs, quarterback, get on the same page, make the blocks. You got yourself some yards, and you're able to become a threat on the offense. 47 yards, by far the longest run of the year for the Owls. Now FAU will go from the gun. Quick pursuit on the screen pass, and look at this. He's got the convoy straight up the middle, and an easy score for the Owls. Just the second touchdown of the year for Florida Atlantic, and it is number 88, Jason Harmon, the 6'3", 185-pound tight end out of Tampa, Florida. You know, Mike, uh, what a great play for Florida Atlantic, especially in the first series. They know Carolina's going to come out being aggressive, firing off the ball, and that's just a screen play. I mean, great, that was a great offensive call. A great call. You could tell they were pretty much encouraging the Garnet jerseys to come in there. By the time it was caught, nobody was left. Now they're going to have to throw it into the end zone to, on the conversion, and it's knocked away, batted down by number 40 for the Gamecocks, as well as 36, Stoney Woodson, as we take another look at the touchdown. See the offensive line, they're just letting, letting all the defense come through, and there's nobody left except from, for some defensive backs. And, those big daddies up front took, took care of them real quick. Well, just a little inside screen. And I mean, <laughs> I think he was almost surprised how open he was. Jason Harmon caught that ball. Sometimes you, you get hit on a play like that as soon as you catch it. But there was nobody within five yards. First down and 10 from the Owls 49 yard line. Gamecocks showing an eye formation look. It's Mike Davis off left tackle. Davis tripped up and a modest game. Josh Pinnock in on the stop. He's the leader of this defensive line. Josh, we outlined this uh, in the open. Mike Davis, especially with Corey Boyd out of this game, is going to have to come up big tonight. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, reiterating what we said last year, he was a good, a good back, and we could count on him to get five yards of carry towards the end of the year. And he just, he hadn't been performing so far this year. And everybody's still kind of waiting for him, you know. Davis came in averaging just two yards of carry. They fake it to Davis this time, and Savelle Newton keeps it. That's a play that Savelle's been running his four-year career at Carolina, but not a whole lot of room for him there as France Joseph plugs the hole, the middle linebacker. Seven to six, Carolina with a one-point lead. Gamecock scoring on a touchdown reception by Sidney Rice. You know, something I've noticed, Mike, from last year to this year, Coach Spurrier is getting involved in the play calling a lot more. Here's a third down and three. Newton bobbles the snap, now fires to McKinley. 25 and out of bounds at the 21-yard line. 21 yards on the reception as we get you another look. Here's Savelle Newton, uh, athletic, grabbing the ball, stepping up in pressure, and Kenny McKinley, one of those unspoken heroes, making a great catch. Chris White, although he did make a moderate snap, he did establish a good block on the defender, and he's one of those preseason uh, All-American guys, Mike. By far and away, the anchor of that offensive line is 32nd career start. That's more than the other four guys combined. Newton to the end zone. Sidney Rice, touchdown, Carolina. 
21 yards. As Savelle Newton going back to the All-American. Gamecocks came into this ball game with zero touchdown receptions. Sidney Rice has two already in the first quarter. You know, Coach Burr has been saying all week that Savelle is one of the one of the best passers that we have on the team. So he just hasn't been taught that. And he's trying to get in his mind that you're a good passer. You just need to learn to when to throw the ball and where to throw it and what time to throw it. Trust yourself, as uh, Coach Spurrier often says. The extra point up and in by one Ryan Suckup. And the Gamecocks back up now by eight points. 14 to six, our score with 3.29 to go in the first quarter of play is Sidney Rice now five grabs, 89 yards, and two touchdowns. Savelle Newton with a fine game thus far, six out of eight, 110 yards, and of course both touchdown passes to Rice. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Sidney Rice, you got to throw the ball anywhere in his, the vicinity of him, and he's going, he's going to find a way to come down with the ball one way or another. The deep back, staggered eye look. You've got Stafford in the block. Newton launches one deep. Far sideline, just incomplete. Kenny McKinley had to circle under that ball as it was thrown to the inside. If he throws it to the outside, Josh, that might be a touchdown. Yeah, uh, Kenny McKinley getting getting off the line of scrimmage and getting downfield quick. Um, Going to take a look here at the end of the play. Like I said, getting down the field quick, beating the defensive back, but you know, if that ball would have been thrown to the inside, uh, excuse me, the outside, he might have had a chance, and Coach Spurrier is a big, big advocate on that. Give the receiver a chance. Almost threw that one like a Frisbee as it just broke back inside. Here's a catch complete, and that is Noah Whiteside. There has been a Noah Whiteside sighting. 5'10", 180-pound senior out of Greenville, South Carolina. So many high hopes for Noah coming out of high school. His career has been marred by injuries and suspensions, but nice play on this exchange. Yeah, right there, Savelle. Plenty of time, step, throw the ball. I'm sure Coach Spurrier has been working with him all week, placing the ball instead of just throwing it. And no white side getting some action there. I know he's long away to return, um, but a senior, and Coach Spurrier is also big on senior play, so. First down and 10 now. Sidney Rice, the top of your screen. Newton looks for him, finds him at the 25. Tries the spin move. Not much doing there, though. Good containment by Corey Small, number 26 of Florida Atlantic. Uh, Sidney Rice, he's kind of he's kind of getting too complicated with his moves now. He, as a receiver, before you know it, you're going to have two different defensive backs on you at the same time. And, a lot of times, one cut and go, just make a decision. Put your head down and get whatever yards you can. Six catches now for Rice, 93 yards. Newton hands it off to Davis. Davis will jitterbug move. Penalty flag on the play, thrown by the umpire. And 90% of the time, we know that's going to be a holding call. And that, that really kind of irritates Coach Spurrier right there. Because if you look at this drive, Mike, and how many times we've thrown the ball versus run the ball, and Holding I said it before yards, about Florida offense. Atlantic, if you don't penalty, establish a line of scrimmage in a run game, then they aren't going to honor it, and they're going to be dropping six defensive backs on you and try to take away the pass. The infraction is on 71, William Brown, who is back from suspension. William Brown, junior guard out of Boonville, North Carolina, had four starts a year ago. Second and 15. Ball spotted on the 34 as Newton operates from the gun. Newton cocks back, fires, throws left side to Davis. Davis weaves his way to the original line of scrimmage before being brought down by France Joseph. So it'll set up a third down and nine. That offensive formation, you see them in the shotgun, but you see the running back line up directly behind the quarterback, and that's odd. You don't see a lot of teams doing that. In fact, I haven't seen any other team do that. And um, that's just something else in Coach Spurrier's playbook that he has available according to the personnel that he has. Third and nine. 
from the 28. Again, Newton from the gun, surveys, dumps it to the back, Davis, 20. Davis takes another lick. Davis still on his feet and lunges forward to the 15. That'll be a first down. George Allen finally brings down the sophomore tailback out of Columbia, and that's the Mike Davis that Gamecock fans grew to know and love last year. That's right. I mean, look here. He's underneath, safety valve, just taking shot after shot after shot, and he's still on his feet. And like I said before, this is this is the back we had last year. And hopefully this will give him a little confidence and kind of get him into the flow of the game and say, come on, Mike, let's go. Let's, let's get up there and let's gain some positive yards. Mike Davis normally not used as a receiver. That would ordinarily be Corey Boyd's role. But again, Boyd out of this game with the ankle injury. Taylor ranked the lone back, play action. Newton has time. Now he's going to run it himself at the 10. And he is crunched at the five. Four white jerseys all over him. Savelle Newton right near the first down marker. We're going to take a look at this play, Mike. Uh, Savelle Newton back and play action pass, but you know, he gets antsy back there when he's got guys running at him, so he's athletic enough to where he can, he's got to go ahead from Coach Perry to just take off of the ball. Second down and a yard. Not a bad opportunity to take a crack at the end zone. One thing Steve Spurrier said earlier in the week, he wants to throw the ball in the end zone more often this year. Instead, it's going to be a handoff to Rank, and he is smothered. Josh Pinnock immediately with the stop, a two-year starter and a leader of that defensive line. See Blake Mitchell there on the sideline looking on, just waiting for his chance. Uh, Coach Spurrier said previous previously this week that he will see time tonight and um, he has uh, apologized and apologized again for his actions uh, last week and uh, or uh, two weeks ago excuse me and uh, hopefully when Savell comes through and gets some points on the board for Carolina Garrett Anderson into the game for the banged up William Brown Third down and three, the situation for Carolina. The Gamecocks two out of four on third down tonight. From the eye, Newton looking all the way. Wide open is Sidney Rice. Give him the hat trick. And it's 20 to six as Sidney Rice taking that goose egg off the board in the touchdown category. He's got three tonight and his eighth career 100-yard game. Here, here's a... A look at him, Mike, and I don't understand how Florida Atlanta can go with him being this wide open, but it must have been an error in the deep defensive back category uh, that uh, they didn't didn't know where number four was. You have to wonder how you could not know, <laughs> of all people, where number four is. Suck up, splits the uprights on the extra point. It's 21 to six now, and the Gamecocks finally finding a rhythm on offense. Savelle dropping back, and it looked like a miscue between the defensive backs and just snuck in there behind him. Savelle had a moderate amount of time and was able to deliver a good pass, but, you know, he's he's not having an easy night. He's getting banged up, so, but. You see Sidney Rice having a great night so far. Seven receptions over 100 yards and three TDs. Like you said, Mike, a hat trick on the night so far. And again, uh, for Savelle Newton, that's three touchdown passes. Certainly one of the better games in his career. And got Faithful certainly liking what they've seen here early on as this offense, which has struggled mightily this year, has all of a sudden found a rhythm in the first half of this game against Florida Atlantic. Savelle Newton and Sidney Rice on the same page. And you had to wonder how much longer it would be before a Gamecock quarterback actually throws a touchdown pass. The only TD pass on the year was a gadget play from Savelle to Corey Boyd in week number one against Mississippi State. But now with Savelle at the quarterback spot, he's uh, starting to rack up some stats Scoring drive, 10 plays, 90 yards, 4 minutes, 45 seconds. And the 
touchdown reception, eight yards from Savelle Newton to Sidney Rice. Savelle Newton comes into this game three and three as a starter. And again, had thrown nine touchdown passes coming in. He now has 12 career touchdown passes. I think uh, Coach Spurrier is getting what he wanted out of the offense now. That he's was all looking for a spark. Offense was very flat. And he's just looking for something to gain yards and put points on the board. I mean, had a close one last week against Wofford. Well, that picture of Howard Schnellenberger is certainly worth a thousand words. Uh, kind of an incredulous look right now. Unhappy with how his defense could forget about number four. Kickoff fielded at the six and down to about the 22 yard line. That's where the Owls will take over. 11-10 remaining in the first half. The Gamecocks with a 21-6 lead. Marvin Sapp into the game for Carolina. Jasper Brinkley is also out there in the linebacking core. You have Darian Stewart in the secondary. A lot of changes, a lot of young guys playing tonight. See what the Owls do to try to respond here. Florida Atlantic will play two quarterbacks quite a bit. That's Sean Clayton still in the game. And it's going to be Clayton on the keeper. I'll take that back. Just as I say, they like to play two quarterbacks. That is the second quarterback, Rusty Smith, number 11, a 6'5 redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville. He was actually named the opening day starter against Clemson, but has uh, lost the job since then. He's thrown for 257 yards on the year, but no touchdowns and two INTs. They really think this young man is the future, though. Very excited about what he brings to the table. Just still very young, still learning his way out there on the field. Second down and seven. And the carry goes out to the 30-yard line. It'll set up a third down and two. Charles Pierre on the carry, stopped in his tracks by Casper Brinkley. You know, Mike, when you look at an offense with two quarterbacks and the coach trying to mix up the offense with two different quarterbacks, you sometimes wonder, is that going to be a struggle for the other guys that he's around, or is that going to be a struggle for momentum? Yeah. Third down and two. And that'll be shy of a first down. Aaron Sanchez unable to get out of the grasp of Joel Reeves, who is really starting to impress the coaching staff. Big number 98 doing a good surge here on this play. You take a look here. Shedding the offensive line, offensive lineman and coming up, keeping his shoulder square and making a textbook tackle right there. Joel Reeves, a teammate at Georgia Military College of the Brinkley Brothers. He says, you know, I'm used to setting up those guys to make the big plays. Now I'm ready to make some big plays here at Carolina. And last couple weeks he's really played some fine defense. The punt off the leg, off the foot rather, of Mike O'Neill. And not much there on the return for Kenny McKinley. 8.42 remaining in the first half of play. It's the Gamecocks 21 and the Owls 6. And you're watching CSS. First down and 10. Taylor Rank gets the carry up the middle. And a solid gain of about 8 yards. Tell you what, Taylor Rank really trying to Make a name for himself tonight. He's done just that, a solid first half. That, is, that he is, Mike. Uh, you know, this is his first collegiate game being able to play in. So this is his chance. You know, he's got some tough runners in front of him that have already established themselves, like Coy Boyd and Mike Davis. But he's just taking advantage of the, of the opportunity that he has. Six carries, making seven now. And he fumbles the football. Boy, just as we sing his praises. Taylor doing his best to make us look bad by putting it on the ground. I was about to tell you that he was having a great game, six carries, 54 yards, but uh, that exchange there will take him back to the sideline. 
And there's Steve Spurrier saying, come on, Taylor. Goodness gracious. It's just the little things. Yep. And that's what really bothers Coach Spurrier because that just takes away from a chance of him being able to move the football. Right. Now it's third down and four. Newton. Draw play to Davis. Davis fighting for extra yards. He'll have the first down. A late penalty right, flag is thrown down on the field. That's the Mike Davis we all know and love right, right there. And I believe this might be a face mask penalty on Acevedo of Florida Atlantic. And there you go. We're taking a look here in the shotgun, just a simple draw play up the middle. Oh, right there, the initial hit by the first FAU player in there. Got a hold of that face mask, and it really looks worse than what it really is. Mike Davis again between the tackles, but he is thumped Mike at Davis the line. The no gain on that one. Mike Davis really a between-the-tackles runner. Corey Boyd is the guy they like to be able to bust it outside and and create space and make moves. Davis is more of a gritty, gutty guy, Josh. Yeah, Davis is a definite, definite straight ahead runner, and Coy Boyger more, you know, hit him in the flats, flare out passes, and a lot of screens. And Second down and nine. Newton, all kinds of time. Newton fires it up the middle. It's up for grabs, and caught! Touchdown! Are you kidding me? Sidney Rice, give him four. Four touchdown receptions on a ball that was truly a jump ball. Newton can't believe it. He knows it got bailed out, and it's a new Carolina record. Four touchdown receptions in one game. Like, I don't think Savelle knew who he was throwing that ball to. I think he just threw it up. And <laughs> I will sing this man's praises all year long if I have to. He finds some way to come down with the ball every time. Boy, that is a sandlot throw if you've ever seen one. Suck up perfect on the night, 4-4. Four four. Now 28-6 to six the score as we take another look. Right here he's saying, all right, there's, there's Sydney. Let me just throw it up. Look at this. Goes through. Off of, through two hands of the defenders and through the hand, off the shoulder pads of the third, and then who else but Sidney Rice comes down with the ball for the touchdown. You got four white jerseys back here. Watch number nine, Acevedo. The ball's going to just kind of hang on a shoulder pad and then right into the hands of Sidney Rice. He is an unbelievable player, isn't he? Sure is. A lot of fun to watch, and it's amazing how. The productivity has changed. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be bragging about that one at the film study. No, I don't think he is either. I well, he has a priceless look. I have a feeling that look that you see right there is, is going to be shown several times throughout this year because FAU is clearly in a, it's hard to say, rebuilding process. They've never been built. They're in a building process right now. Little slip screen inside, and that's near the marker. Chris Bonner on the catch and Joel Reeves on the stop. That's the same play that they scored on uh, earlier in the game. And uh, like we say, uh, Carolina's getting such a great surge up front penetration that the offensive line just slip them real quick and get downfield to get a block for them. Third down of the yard. They try to get the quick snap, but a penalty flag is dropped again. So this game is starting to get a little bit sloppy here late in the second quarter. Full snap, full start, number 78, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Mark Curls, our referee tonight, calling the penalty on Jared Smith, the right guard. He's played in every game since his redshirt freshman year, and he's now a redshirt junior out of Brighton, Florida. That's a momentum killer, Mike. You're looking at third and a yard. Now you're looking at third and six. 
you know, and Florida Atlantic can't afford to do that. Smith batted around, caught on the interception. And now a fumble on the play. And I think Carolina, for the second time tonight, dodged a bullet. But Curtis Rice with the interception, and it'll be Gamecock football. Marvin Sapp recovers the fumble. The numbers on Mitchell, not so good. Didn't get off to the start that he did last year. Has struggled a bit, but uh, fans getting behind him. You hear some applause as uh, Blake Mitchell's a guy that might be called upon again this year. No question about that. First down and 10. Mitchell immediately looking back to pass, and he is smothered. Ball on the ground and is recovered again by Carroll. That's the third fumble. All three recovered by the Gamecocks. And I think Blake has to understand that he is not his name in Oh, I'm sorry, we're going back to the interception here. Curtis Rice making a, a great play. Marvin Sapp didn't know that his teammate had caught the ball, and then he finally decided he was going to come downfield and make a block. But Curtis getting blindsided, and Marvin Sapp being able to come back and recover the fumble. But going back to quarterback, uh, Blake's got to understand his name is Savelle Newton, and he can't shed blockers and throw the ball at the same time. Yeah. Well, uh, that was enough to get Blake out of the game in a hurry. Savelle Newton is back out onto the field. Second down, 17. Newton takes it himself and is struck down past midfield. Gain of about eight. It'll set up a third down and maybe a chance for one more Hail Mary before the half comes to a close. Got 14 seconds left on the clock. And I'm not sure if Steve Spurrier is happy with just 28 points here. So here we go, third down and 10. From the gun, it's Newton. Newton, plenty of time. Cox and fires and incomplete, another dangerous pass. When he goes against and throws it to the opposite side of the field, well, yeah, everybody just holds their breath, including that man. Newton gets the snap. He's actually looking right side and trying to hit a streaking Andy Boyd who was open, but if you make that catch, yeah, you could probably still get a timeout, set up a field goal. It would have been a first down. So Florida Atlantic now will get to play Hail Mary. Gamecocks backing up the entire secondary all the way inside the 20. Rusty Smith looking to launch, not going to be able to do it. He is smothered by Eric Norwood. Now, the clock did not start for some reason, but that should be the final play of the half. And I'm quite sure after the officials uh, talk things over, that will be. Already coaches uh, walking toward the locker room, but uh, the clock operator falling asleep at the wheel as it still shows six seconds. Now everybody has been granted a whole pass. So, Josh Brown, some thoughts on the first half. Well, Carolina did have somewhat of a spark, but still little kinks in the offense, and Coach Brayer has the second half to try and get them out. Second half action about to get underway with the Gamecocks having a 28-6 lead as Ryan Suckup gives it another boot. And we might have another returnable kickoff, the second one of the night for Florida Atlantic. And the return man is necktied at about the 23-yard line by Curtis Rice. That was Bartles on the return, and Curtis Rice sent him down in a hurry. Mike, well, as we take a look here at the halftime stats, rushing yards are about the same for both teams, but the big difference is in the passing yards and Carolina getting it done there as well as the time of possession um, you know but it's a lot of penalties getting thrown each way here but Carolina coming away uh, as the better team from the first half Sean Clayton is back in the game at quarterback for the Owls quick hitter up the middle and a whole lot of space there for Charles Pierre that's first down yardage for the Owls big hole there by the interior of that offensive line 
As we take a look here, just a simple draw play up the middle and Florida Atlantic going back to basics and getting it done up front, opening up holes for their running backs. Stoney Woodson and Chris Hampton combining on the tackle. Nine carries, 57 yards for that man, Charles Pierre, who is stopped by Casper Brinkley. Gamecocks nearly doubling up Florida Atlantic in total yards in the first half. And FAU trying to find something positive on offense. They really, after that one impressive drive, really sputtered in the entire second quarter. From the eye, it's Sean Clayton. Clayton going to try to run himself, fumbles the football. It's picked up by Carolina. Down to the 20-yard line, Gamecock football, and on the fumble recovery, it's number 45, Rodney Polk, the freshman who continues to make big plays. He's just in the right place at the right time, Mike, and that's where great players are. I think we're looking at a future star here for Carolina on defense. Rodney Park out of Richland Northeast High School. They love his energy. He's going to show you some energy on this play. There's uh, Brinkley coming up, forcing the fumble. Pepper taking him down, and like I said before, Park's in the right place at the right time, picking it up. The next best thing will be able to, for him to stiff on that guy and score. That'll come with time, I'm sure. A little extra years in the weight room. Brinkley causing that fumble. Here's Savell Newton to the end zone. Rice, fifth touchdown of the night. And that is the new single game touchdown receiving record. Sidney Rice, five touchdown grabs. All five coming from Savell Newton. And move over Mike Dingle and Stanley Pritchett. There's a new man atop the record books. And that is Sidney Rice. Sidney was a little slow getting up there, and you see him kind of mildly getting congratulations from everybody. I think uh, his ankles a little busted up there, but I'm sure after, was it five touchdowns now, that he can sit on the bench and rest for a little while. He'll get over the pain. The extra point is good by Suckup. Carolina now leading it. 35 to 6 here on CSS. All 35 of them, but a record breaking performance for Sidney Rice. That's right. I mean, he's just a, he's a star. That's all I can say. A star that's shining bright here in the capital city tonight on a beautiful night weather wise and a beautiful night for the Gamecocks passing game, which has been inept through three games this year. Again, came in with no touchdown passes. Well, that was solved easily by throwing it to Sidney Rice. That's right. It's amazing how that uh, formula seems to work as Florida Atlantic has had simply no answers on how to defend Sidney Rice. No, and going back to the beginning of the ball game saying how they can't man cover Sidney. That's proven so far going into halftime. Florida Atlantic trying to run wide with Aaron Sanchez, but too much speed down the line for Carolina. Nathan Pepper, sophomore out of Greenville on the stop. Howard Schnellenberger. What a career that man has had. Offensive coordinator for one Paul Bear Bryant at one time. Also the offensive coordinator for one Don Shula. Took the job at Miami. You got to remember, Miami was a program that had not arrived. In fact, talking with Coach Schnellenberger earlier in the week, they were actually thinking of getting rid of the program as the pass falls incomplete. When he led Miami to the national title in 1983, Coach Schnellenberger told me his salary was $75,000. $75,000 for a national championship. That's a pretty good deal even back in 83. I would think so. He's, he's done a fantastic job. And then, of course, he left Miami for the USFL, the now defunct USFL, the Washington Federals. And, of course, the league folded shortly thereafter. 
He then came back to the college game, coaching at Louisville and Oklahoma, and looked like he was retired for good before Florida Atlantic came calling in 2001. Critical third down and 10 for Florida Atlantic. Here's a pass play down the far sideline. It's broken up incomplete. Chris Hampton read that one all the way. A little bit banged up on the play, but looks like he's... Well, now might be more serious than initially. Look, now he's having trouble getting up as we take a chance to get another look here at just what happened. Went and tried to fade on the sideline for Florida Atlantic, and uh, I mean that's got to hurt. I mean he was he was blindsided at his legs, and you wonder if uh, uh, it's good to see him moving, but you wonder if uh, he hurt him hurt hurt one of his legs there. see Chris Hampton able to get off the field on his own power. Carolina already shorthanded of a secondary as Emmanuel Cook banged up. He was unable to go in this ball game, the starting rover. Punt by the Owls. McKinley lets it bounce and now he's going to have to let Florida Atlantic stop it dead. Gamecock still should have good field position. Ball spotted at the 37-yard line. 11.52 to go, third quarter of play. Gamecocks up 35-6. If I'm uh, anybody even remotely related to Sidney Rice or Savelle Newton, I'm gonna watch that game on Sunday, and then I'm gonna request a copy of the tape and watch it again and again. It's been a fantastic game, but Blake Mitchell now gonna come in out of the bullpen, as it were, as Taylor Rank gets another carry. He's had a nice Ball game thus far, some tough yards up the middle. That'll be good for a first down. Acevedo finally stops him in his tracks. You know, Coach Spurrier is just giving Blake a, a sense of being a quarterback again right here. Just something easy, something to get him in the flow of the game, not open it up with a pass. Turn around, hand the ball off. Taylor Rank picking up some good yardage there. Rank stays in the game. A staggered eye look, rank, eight carries, 67 yards. Not bad for his first ever start in a Gamecock uniform. Short carry this time on the left side. Gain of about four yards. It'll be second down and six. Good chance that we won't see Savell Newton the rest of the night already up now by 35 to six. So. Savell Newton, if he doesn't come back, he's already in the record books. Five touchdown passes, ties the school record. Steve Tannehill did it twice. Grants and Suggs also did it one time for the Gamecocks. And of course, uh, Sidney Rice has the receiving record now with five. Blake launching one as he gets hit and just missing. Noah Whiteside on a deep route. Give Blake Mitchell credit. He took the hit, st stood tough in the pocket, and just nearly missed a touchdown connection. Yeah, Blake, he got licked. He for sure did right there at backside, but step, stepped up, made a throw to at least give the receiver a chance. Great play there by Blake. You know, if there's one thing that would be one of the assets that Blake Mitchell gives you over any other quarterback on the roster right now, he's not afraid to take a lick. He'll stand there in the pocket, he'll take the hit, and give you that extra, give those receivers that extra second or two to get open. Mike Davis gets the carry, fighting near the 40, drug back at about the 39-yard line. That's another guy that's not afraid to get a lick, and that's Mike Davis. He'll Savelle Newton, 13 out of 20, 216 yards, five scores. He probably wants to get back out there. He could rewrite a few more records, but uh, I don't know if Coach Spurrier's 
going to get him in there unless Blake fouls up. Mitchell tosses it left side to Davis. Davis pummeled at the 35, but not before another Gamecock first down. George Allen with the tackle for the Owls, along with Acevedo, number nine. We're going to take another look here at fourth down play. Tall sweep to the outside, Lenar Stafford making the block, so Mike Davis can jump over for the first down, and that's something, if you remember from last year, he liked to jump a lot, yeah, especially into the end zone. Right. Davis now, six carries, 23 yards. Again, came in just averaging two yards per carry. Mitchell, all kinds of time, throws it left side, caught by McKinley at the 15. He'll be pushed out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Blake Mitchell coming through in a big way there. It's his first completion back. And uh, it's got to it's gotta feel good to get the monkey off your back, you know, yeah. coming back, being a quarterback, getting trying to get back in the flow of things, and especially with such a disruption that you had. Dropping back, just feeling the flow right here, making a great pass. If you see right there, the linebacker was right in front of McKinley. He made a great pass. That's a pretty ball, as that replay indicates right over 45 and right into the hands of that man, Kenny McKinley. His second catch of the night. Here's a run right side. It's Davis, the stiff arm, and he is spun down at about the two. Looked like the Owl defender was going to spin him right into the end zone. That's Chris Bartles on the tackle. We take a look here. Mike Davis, tough runner, trying to cut to the outside, give him a stiff arm, and as you can see, awareness of where he's at, trying to extend over the goal line get that score. Tonight, Mike. Mike Davis is doing well so far. Seven rushes, 32 yards. I think this is an improvement from the past three games. You know, I I, I believe he can be the back that he was last year, and I think he, do, he believes that too. It's just he's got to get back in the groove of things. He gets the ball here, right side, into the end zone for another Carolina touchdown. And this time, the Gamecocks Get it done on the ground. A big block by the fullback, Lenard Stafford. And Mike Davis, his first touchdown of the year. He well deserved there. I believe uh, he's had a uh, good enough game where he deserved the, the ball to take it in for the score. Now Mike Davis needed something positive to happen about as much as anybody else on this team. The other guy probably close behind him would be Blake Mitchell, and he had some nice throws on the drive as the Gamecocks make it 42 at the extra point. They should get another one. Yeah, Andy Boyd and uh, Lamar Stafford. Stafford getting a great block for, for uh, Mike Davis. And, uh, new face down there, and the only reason I know this is because I'm a kicker, but uh, Jordan Dodds adding on the extra point there. 8.51 remaining. All Gamecocks here on CSS. Deserves a little bit of oxygen right now after the successful eight-play touchdown drive. Actually, Mike, that is what you see there is uh, it's an air system uh -huh. that the university... Oh, for the pads. Yeah, for the pads. I have, I have seen a little bit on that. That technology continues to amaze me as the return is out to about the 22. Yeah, from that angle, it I does. thought maybe some O2 it was is. being pumped in there. <laughs> That's right. But it's actually a system that they build into the shoulder pads to Velcro in, and they hook this system up into the shoulder pads to cool them down faster. Right. Now, does a kicker ever no, need that? No, no, the kicker doesn't need that. <laughs> no. Uh, you'd probably be made fun of by a lot of your teammates <laughs> if you were using extra pad precautions as the kicker. That's right. That's right. Either that or there's a serious problem with the special teams. That's right. Do you remember the hardest hit you ever took as a kicker? Uh, I can't say that I have. <laughs> Florida Atlantic football from the 23. Run between the tackles. Not much doing there up the middle. Well, when you think about big plays by Carolina kickers, you don't have to think long and hard. You go back last year, and that man, Josh Brown from 49. Brownie, it would have been good from at least 49 and a half. That's right. That didn't exert any extra energy right there. But, uh, you know, that wasn't a only a great moment for me and the players, but for all the Carolina fans. And it was just such a, a great feeling to be the first team to beat Tennessee at Tennessee. 
Big hit on the quarterback as the pass falls incomplete. Sean Clayton on the throw. Uh, what was your career long before that kick? Uh, I believe the career long before that kick was uh, somewhere around 42. 42. I believe, yeah. I mean, did, did you have any doubt you'd be able to get it there? <laughs> there was no doubt. No I made, doubt. I made Coach Spurrier's uh, decision very easy, as he says. Uh, halfway out on the field for fourth down, he said, well, I guess I'll just let him kick it. So <laughs> Third down, eight yards to go. From the 25, a little inside screen again. It's worked for a touchdown in the first half, and it'll be, it'll be shy of a first down unless they give him a really good spot. I would think that'd be shy by about a yard. I don't think I'm going to buy the stock, Mike, for <laughs> your. <laughs> I, I, again, I, 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 I go ahead with the following disclaimer: more times than not, I am off by a half a yard, including this time. As they did give him a pretty good spot on that. That that forward progress sometimes is a gray area. Uh, he got drugged back, I think, a, a favorable spot there. But uh, <laughs> when you're down 42 to six, deserve, why not? Yeah, you deserve you, a break. You, you deserve a break. It was a draw play, and again, Carolina reading it. 94, Jean Pierre in on the stop of Willie, Willie Floyd, Floyd as the Owls now bringing in some of the backup running backs. Florida Atlantic, by the way, coming into this game has been in the red zone just six times all year, and that will cause a head coach to give the following look. <laughs> when you simply struggle so much to move the football, they had that great drive in the first half, and you thought, well, maybe progress is being made. Carolina's really stymied up the rest of the way. There's a pitch out in the flat, and that'll be good for a first down near midfield. And we have seen Coach Spurrier with that frustrated look a time or two so far this season. Aaron Sanchez past the marker for a first down. Blake Mitchell, he's eyeing that scoreboard saying, okay, Coach, I'll, I want to keep throwing. 200th collegiate game as a head coach for Steve Spurrier. And all he did at Florida was rewrite the record books. Still the winningest coach in SEC history, percentage-wise. A big run on the left side, but a penalty flag thrown down. That's probably going to be a hole. Well, everybody's kind of wondered, Josh, where has the offense been? 150 games at Florida over the course of 12 years. And Spurrier's offense has averaged 36.9 points per game as we get Holding, the call. Number 88, offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's on the receiver, Jason Harmon. Let's take a look here and see if we can see the receiver on the hold. Get some good blocks up front for Floyd Atlantic. And... Uh, like you said, there's a lot of freshmen and new faces in there on the defense. They're trying to get some playing time. Just to uh, finish the point, under Steve Spurrier, Carolina, through 15 games coming into this one, averaging 21.7. So that's a, a drop off of about 16 points per game. And everybody's been waiting for a game like this where Spurrier's aired it out. And the offense has kind of gone nuts, and that's what's happened so far tonight. Florida Atlantic airing it out, but again, off target, as has been the case for much of the night. Pass intended for Franz Simeon. You know, like you say, Mike, Coach Spurrier, looking back at this game, will see the numbers and be happy compared to his other past offensive performances. But I can guarantee you one thing. He is never satisfied right. with where he is. Right. He's always trying to build week to week and trying to get better. And that's what makes him such a winner. I mean, he is a perfectionist. And tonight, he'll probably find a couple of flaws in this game, but I doubt he can find many. As the Owls, again, between the tackles on second down and long, second and 20 to be exact. In 01, his last year at Florida, Rex Grossman and company had 48 touchdown passes. And through 15 games, Carolina quarterbacks have thrown just 21. Now that number is obviously going to be augmented by the five TD passes tonight. But all this leads up to the following point, and that is 
Steve Spurrier really hasn't been able to run his offense yet at Carolina. They're still working on the personnel. They need a few more Sidney Rices. They need a few more quarterbacks that can get the ball there. That's right. Almost a sack. Now Rice is chasing down Sean Clayton. Clayton, pretty good wheels. Gets it out past the 45 and actually near the marker. Marvin Sapp had himself a sack, and somehow Clayton shaked him loose. Shaked him loose. Take a look here. He's a avoiding two of the Carolina defenders, Rice, and like you say, he's got some wheels on him, and Brinkley taking a bad pursuit angle, underestimating his ability to run. Odd fourth down, I don't think any question here. You're Florida Atlantic, down 42 to six, might as well go for it. Waiting three out of 11, 46 yards. His two biggest plays have been on the ground. Confusion and a timeout call. So the Owls and Howard Schnellenberger are going to use this opportunity to talk things over. Josh, when you take a look at what lies ahead, six SCC ball games, including a Thursday night affair against the number two ranked Auburn Tigers, is this what this team needs now? to get some confidence going, to get some cohesion, and play some better football, make some noise in the league. Well, I tell you what, you, you take a look at last year, and you take a look at what happened against Auburn, um, and then what happened after Auburn. Um, Coach Spurrier has shown, has shown that he can win consecutive SEC, road, SEC games. And you take a look here, Auburn, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, Tennessee, Arkansas, Florida. Those are six in a row. And, and when you play in the SEC, it's going to be a dogfight every week. Arkansas picking up a big win today in overtime over Alabama. And the, the normal automatic W's that you've counted on in years past, talking about Kentucky and Vandy, both those games are on the road. Andre Woodson's playing very good football right now for the Wildcats. And is there a scrappier team around than Vanderbilt? Even without Jay Cutler, they're playing some good football. So that's a very brutal stretch for the Gamecocks. All kinds of time for Clayton. And he takes advantage, finds an open man at the 35. That's Chad Wilkes, and that's a first down. Yeah, uh, Florida Atlantic taking advantage of the, the single coverage over there on the backside. And uh, Max protected. They drop him back, and you see Carolina rush two guys and dropped everybody else and Carlos Thomas is on the island over there on the back side and uh, he's got plenty of time and when you give quarterbacks plenty of time they're going to learn to pick apart defense Florida Atlantic not going to abandon that running game even though more often than not it's been marginal gains on the ground including that run play although maybe three possibly Four yards. We'll call it second down and a short seven. Howard Schnellenberger going to take a lot of patience. Anytime you're starting up a new program, a lot of patience. And yet people say, well, why would you schedule all these difficult teams? you got to raise money. They're trying to get a new stadium. There's the pass out to the far sideline, complete for another first down to that man, Chad Wilkes, again. Yvonne Benag, and on the stop for the Gamecocks. 4.06 to go in the third quarter, 42 to six, Gamecocks in the lead. Tyrone Hicks has uh, gotta be happy with the way his defense has performed, particularly doing a much better job of stopping the run, at least in the second half. There's a belly play up the middle. And a short game for Aaron Sanchez. I'm going to reiterate what I was saying, Mike, uh, earlier in the game. Right now he's getting guy, fresh fresh guys in there, guys that you know might not see very much playing time, and trying to just get them to understand the good fundamentals of defense. And what better time than 
to learn than in a game setting against a, a different team, you know, not the same scout team that you're going against every week. And just a great learning experience for a lot of guys. Coach Nick's doing a great job with the defense. Second down and eight yards to go. Clayton looking for the end zone and can't connect with Chad Wilkes. Captain Munnerlin, a young defensive back who continues to draw high praise by the Carolina coaching staff. Nice job on the coverage there. He is. He's a, like I said before, I, haven't, I didn't have the opportunity to play with this young man, but he is definitely a performer from what he's shown the first four games. Kind of came out of nowhere out of Mobile, Alabama. And he wasn't a four-star guy, as some people get so obsessed about recruiting height. But uh, he's already becoming one of their better defensive backs. Third down and eight, the 14th play of this drive as Sean Clayton tries to get some tough yards off the edge. Casper Brinkley and Marvin Sapp in on the stop. Sapp's had a pretty big night off the bench for Carolina. He has, and I think a lot of it's coming from uh, the coaching staff. And, you know, you talk about toughness and the past games and the defense allowing uh, so many points against Georgia. And Coach Nix knows what he's capable of. Marvin Sapp knows what he knows what Marvin is capable of. And it's just trying to get that out of him. And uh, it's one of those motivation type things that he's trying to not start him and get him to realize how much it means. Here's a fourth down and four. And penalty flags all over the place before that ball can get off. Looks like a delay of game. Full snap, false start. Number 78, offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. I think they uh, false start beat the delay of game by about a split second. So Florida Atlantic flirting with two penalties on that play. Instead, we'll get the false start. Either way, it'll back them up five. And that sets up a fourth down and nine now for the 22-yard line. Clayton going to run it. Clayton pushing forward, dips that shoulder down, tries to run through Jasper Brinkley, which usually is not a wise move. But you got to give this kid credit. He's, he's tough, if nothing else. This is definitely a tough quarterback. I mean, look at all the games he's been playing and he's still healthy. But you see here, he knows when he's got to pick up the extra yards. And he's aware of where he's at on the field. And he needs that extra yard to pick up the first down and keep the drive alive because that was fourth down. Now, Florida Atlantic's lone touchdown came from 25 yards out. So technically speaking, this is their first trip in the red zone and only the seventh time they've been there all year. So. They've got a whole new playbook to work with. Nothing's been used in quite some time. First and 10 from the 12. They try the draw, nothing doing. Aaron Sanchez tripped up in a hurry. Great play by Ryan Brown. Ryan Brown on the uh, defensive end and slash outside linebacker. I think he's uh, playing a little bit of both there, but he is one of the, one of the, one of the strongest uh, defensive players that Carolina has. I mean, he's one of those guys that can just put up a phenomenal amount of weight. And weight. This is the 17th play of this drive, and it's a second and nine. All kinds of time in the pocket and throws wild outside. Intended for number 87. That's the tight end, Jamari Grant. Fred Bennett was there. Fred Bennett. Really the lone uh, headliner on this defense. Nine career interceptions. And uh, if you want some water cooler material for Monday, Bo Davies, the all-time Carolina interception leader with 14. So Bennett could still catch that record. Might not do it toward uh, until the end of the year, but he's got a shot at it. Bo Davies did it from 1969 through 1971. Third down and nine. They try the draw again, and again it's stopped well short of a first down. 53, Marvin Sapp, and 95, Nathan Pepper. We've called both those names quite a few times tonight. And going back to Fred Bennett, Mike, uh, 
Carolina, I don't know if, I think this is kind of like a hidden thing, but Carolina has always had very good defensive backs. Right. Uh, Sheldon Brown, Andre Goodman, I had the opportunity to play with both of them. Yep. Not not to play, but I was on the team while they were seniors. Yep. Talk about some great senior leaders, those two guys. Uh, Coe Simpson, Jonathan Joseph. Here's a fourth down and six, the 19th play of this drive. On the rollout to the end zone, incomplete. And what was the most successful FAU drive of the night is going to end with zero points. Good pressure there by Reeves and Norwood of Carolina. Fox leading this one 42 to 6 as the fourth quarter about to get underway. Let's send it down to the field. Mr. Heisman, George Rogers standing by. <laughs> I tell you what, Mike, it's been a real good game for South Carolina. They scored a lot of points, and, hey, that's what Gamecocks wanted, wanted, was looking for. But I tell you what, if they're going to play like this, they won't beat the Auburns, they won't beat the Tennessees, and they won't beat the Floridas. they got to play a little bit better. Sidney Rice showed up this week, so that makes us look pretty good. But I think that they got to have more rushing and, and Corey Board and some of those other guys to get going. The running backs, they got to get going, or they won't be winning against the big teams. George Rogers, an insatiable appetite for success. He wants more. 42 points here, but he's looking ahead. A uh, greater challenge coming up on Thursday night against the Auburn Tigers. Hey, I know that guy. I think we just saw him. Number 38, George Rogers, one of the all-time greats, not only in Carolina history, but in college football history, running the football. Not a bad pro career either. Pass intended for Hale but batted out of bounds. Georgia setting a trend for uh, sideline reporters. It used to be unfashionable to wear a visor on the sideline, but when you're George Rogers and you've got a Heisman Trophy in the closet, all kinds of records, uh, he can pretty much don anything. It's going to look good. You've got to respect that about the man. There's a flare out to the left side to Davis. Penalty flag on the play. Knocked out of bounds inside the five. And... Uh, the flags continue to fly with reckless abandon here in the second half. Seven penalties on Florida Atlantic thus far, four on the Gamecocks. Ten on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Six men on the line, Josh. Yeah. Got to have seven. And uh, if you take a look back on the sideline, uh, there's a lot of coaches that were up in the box. Steve Spurrier, Jr., down there. Um, the wide receivers coach, he uh, came down out of the box early um, and uh, helping out the receivers down there on the sideline. Uh, Jared Cook uh, lining up, not lining up on the line of scrimmage. Um, just one of those costly penalties that just frustrates you And as a coach. You practice it all week, all week, all week, and then you get in the game and you, and you make meaningless errors like that. Got a lot of young receivers on the field right now, including Freddie Brown, the freshman out of Duncan. Mitchell back to pass to the corner. Caught and then knocked loose, and they'll rule it incomplete. That was intended for Freddie Brown. Looking for his first career reception. It would have been a touchdown, but he took a hit and couldn't hold on. This is a great pass by Blake. And uh, Freddie Brown's got to come down with this ball. And playing with him, I know what he can do, and he just got tangled up, you know. <laughs> We look at plays like this and we say, you know, you should catch that ball, but you got to remember we're looking at guys like Sidney Rice that can catch anything with right. one hand. You mentioned Sidney Rice. Brown's another pretty big target, 6'3", a buck 98. Played for that now famous Burns offense. Here's another throw to the end zone, and this one is off the intended receiver, Noah Whiteside this time. And Noah hearing some boos from the Gamecock crowd. You know, Mike, I, I think Blake making good throws. It's just uh, receivers got to help him out. You know, we take a look here at Blake. Five-step drop, stepping up, making a good throw. Oh, that, yeah. that's off. Uh, that was off uh, Noah's helmet. So just the receivers got to come down with the ball. And here with the field goal attempt, back to Ryan Suckup now. Call it 34 yards. Kick is up, and that's about perfect. Splits the uprights, and plenty of distance as the Gamecocks tack on three more. It's 45-6. to six. 
Well, you would think nothing but smiles for that man, but again, the perfectionist Steve Spurrier still wants more, 45-6. to six. Josh Brown, a couple of guys we don't talk about often, but mean a lot to this special teams unit. That's right. That's Scott Morgan right there. He's senior long snapper, and I can honestly say every single snap that he has had has been on the money and on target. We have never had a problem, along with Ike Crowfoot right there. He's also the punt long snapper and the holder, and I can also say that the snaps and the holds from him nothing but nothing but perfection and these guys are the guys that you never ever see because they're in the front line you know they're kind of like the unsung heroes in the special teams and they're two guys that if they don't do their job then nothing functions correctly and the only time we ever hear about them is when they do their job poorly is when something <laughs> goes wrong that's right but uh i crowfoot now in his senior year at a Windermere, Florida. Seems like he's been around forever. <laughs> he's a, a Lou Holtz recruit. And like you said, you never think about him because he hardly ever makes a mistake. Al's going to take it out of the end zone. And we'll take it to the 20. And now another late flag. And why not? We have to continue our quota of a flag <laughs> every other play. The clock is uh, having some issues tonight. So they're going to keep time on the field. We have not reached the 0, 0.00 mark. During the return, holding number three, receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Break Joseph the guilty party for the Owls, so that'll back him up and give him some more poor field position to work with. And that is now eight penalties on Florida Atlantic. Well... Florida Atlantic kind of shooting themselves in the foot. I mean, once they got down, it seems like they didn't really care, you know, and just making meaningless errors, you know. But all in all, I think Coach is uh, trying to, like you say, build. Right now you've got a, a lot of young guys trying to build their resumes uh, on the field for this Carolina defense. So how many times, you know, do we – say a guy made a play and we follow that up with the freshman or the sophomore out of one of the various cities and hometowns. You got another guy in there, Gerard St. Clair, a redshirt freshman out on the field. A great tackle there, surging through, knifing through the line. That's 94, and I've mentioned this name a few times tonight. Lemuel Jean-Pierre flows right off the tongue, and that time he flowed right into the Owls' backfield. He is, I mean, you look at his, his frame of his body and you just say he has to be a defensive end. He's just one of those guys that's got height, he's got lanky arms, and he's got the quick moves to get around people, and he's one of these up-and-coming guys that are going to be a great, great attribute for the defense. Penalty flag on the field. After the play, personal foul, number 79, offense. Half the distance to the goal, the down counts, third down. That's on Jared McDonald, the backup left tackle. Howard Schnellenberger right now, a disconsolate look on his face. And Josh, is there, is there anything, all he, anything at all he could feel good about other than that one drive from tonight's ball game? No, I don't think he's very happy about anything right now. Here's a third down and long, 14 to be exact. Pass way out of the reach of the intended target down the far sideline. That is number one, Avery Holly, who also serves as one of their special teamers, one of their return men, and the Owls will be forced to punt the football again. You know, Coach Snellenberger, I can kind of sense his frustration losing hold of his players because if you remember not too long ago, and I hate to bring this up, but the fight against Clemson and Coach Holt and his retirement, right. he kind of lost control over the players and this is kind of what he I can sense he's feeling right now guys getting personal fouls for late hits and just silly silly things yeah eventually if you're Florida Atlantic you're, you're tired of being the whipping boy and there's another unnecessary bump not going to draw a penalty flag as Noah Whiteside falls down at the 45 we're in the fourth quarter no official time except on the field, but trust me, it is the fourth quarter. And the Gamecocks in control, leading it 45-6. to six. And you're watching 
CSS. Scouts waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning and coming to see this man every morning was something that I learned to dislike just because of the way about he goes to do his thing. Um, he He's one of those, his nickname, I got to tell you his nickname is, is Black Iron. Okay, <laughs> and that just kind of sets the tone right there as soon as you show up for a workout. That he takes no slack, no slack at all. If you, let me just say this, if you are late to a workout, it's 150 flights on the Stairmaster. Oh, if you man. miss a workout, it's 300 flights of stairs on the Stairmaster. And he has a board in his office, and don't think you're going to get away with anything. <laughs> He looks like a tough strength at the conditioning coach. Just has that look as Taylor Rank. Well, his conditioning's been pretty good tonight. That's his 12th carry. Greg Joseph finally trips him up. T Taylor Rank's flirting with a 100-yard game, but I don't think Mark Smith is uh, overly impressed yet. No. He Does he ever smile? He doesn't show very much emotion. How, how did you get that guy to smile? <laughs> is there anything we can do? You know what? During practice, we would run after practice, and Coach Spurrier would have to interrupt him and say, Coach, Coach, I think I think they, that's enough. He blowed the whistle, and Coach Smith would be just he'd just be aggravated because he didn't get what he wanted to get done. And <laughs> very tough man. That's all I can say. No nonsense individual. <laughs> they fake the end around. It's Taylor Rank up the middle. Boy, he's got a good amount of toughness. Rank is not a big guy, folks. Six feet. They list him at 206. He looks thinner than that. But very seldom has he gone down on the first bit of contact tonight. Look at that, 13 carries, 94 yards. You would have won a lot of betting pools if you would have picked Taylor Rank to be the leading rusher tonight. And he's by far and away the leading rusher. Mike Davis has 47 yards, and he is back in the game now for Carolina on a second down and five. It's good to see Coach Spurrier sharing the wealth Abs across the offense. Absolutely. All these guys could use the repetition. There's no question about that. Davis guts it up the middle. A couple more tough yards. Joseph, number 56, the stop for the Owls. It'll be third down. Third down and two. There's a lot of new faces on the offensive line as well, Mike. Uh, Coach Berry trying to get some young guys in there. Matt Razor talked about him this week. Seth Edwards. Uh, Jeremy Burgess, right. uh, Justin Sorensen, all guys that haven't got a lot of reps and just trying to get them in there and get them a feel for a different opponent than the scout team. Toss sweep left side will give Davis and the Gamecocks another first down. Matt Razor is a guy who was forced to move from defense to offense, number 68. He is 6'3", 301 pounder out of Bamberg. South Carolina, and he looks more like an offensive lineman from here than he does a D lineman. And, you know, he's another one of these guys like Anderson and, and Eckerson learning on the fly, Josh. That's right. And he, there's no choice but for him to do that. They need depth at offensive line. And, and uh, Coach Spurrier said in the middle of the week that if to Coach Hunt, it, Coach Hunt, if he is able to start and knows the plays well enough to start, then let's start him. So that's just that's a statement right there that Coach Coach Spurrier is willing to take. Uh, not necessarily a downgrade in the offensive play, but he just needs to get guys in there to get experience. Nothing nothing beats experience, you know. Davis goes nowhere on first down, setting up a second and 12 here. Brian Kingry, the fullback, as Davis runs out wide. Mitchell operating under center. Quick pass, quick slant, and a little bit of a low ball off the hands, though, of Chris Hale. Chris Hale is a guy, another one of those freshman receivers out of Lovejoy, Georgia. So a third down and 12. Third and 12 for Carolina here. Again, we're in the fourth quarter, but the uh, game clock has been shut down, so they're keeping time on the field. Davis again, sprinting out top of your screen. Mitchell takes his time, seven-step drop. Wipers incomplete. Mo Brown unable to hold on to the football. Well, this has not been an exhibition in good hands here in the second half by the Carolina receiving corps. That time, the uh, 
Offensive line did a great job. Look right here, Brian King stepping up, picking up the big blitzing linebacker right there. Blake delivering the pass, and receiver just got to come down with the catch. Uh, I think the line did a great job that time, yeah. right? uh, especially being as young as they are. That's right. Now we're going to get a look at Carolina's third kicker of the night. We've seen suck up Dodds, and now Thomas Hooper, junior out of Montgomery, Alabama. Ball spotted right on the 25-yard line, middle of the hash marks. Here's the kick, and it will sail to the left. No good. Timeout on the field. Carolina in control of this one, 45 to 6. And you're watching CSS. Five touchdowns, new school record, five touchdown receptions, nine grabs overall, 161 yards. And Josh, I don't know if you could play a much better game at wide receiver than Sidney Rice did tonight. Uh, there's no question. Sidney Rice, nine receptions, 161 yards, five TDs. Are you serious? I mean, that's all I can say. Uh, record breaking night for Sydney. Sydney Rice and Savelle Newton putting on a clinic early on in this game. Of course, they're both uh, resting up on the bench. Going to be needed big time for the next ball game against the Auburn Tigers. Off left tackle. The Owls keeping it on the ground. And the stop provided by Jasper Brinkley. Not something that you want to see uh, offensively, but uh, see uh, Webb Brown down on the sideline uh, on crutches with a knee brace. Um, not something the offense would look forward to uh, losing another line. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a thinner, and I'm not talking weight-wise, but numbers-wise, thinner line in the SEC than Carolina's right now. Swing pass out to the right side and dropped by the Florida Atlantic running back. That's Willie Rose, Richard freshman out of Lutz, Florida. Well, I mean, Coach Nix is now just putting in his guys that he's trying to get some experience, young guys that are not going to redshirt and maybe running some defensive packages that he doesn't get a chance to run. Um, just trying to defend that Florida Atlantic pass. Second and ten, again the running play, strung out to the right side, and nowhere to run for these Owl backs tonight. Howard Schnellenberger, the various faces of Howard Schnellenberger, both with the uh, nice blazer and without. I tell you, Howard's got to be one of the better dress coaches right. in college football. Howard uh, implementing the, the whistle there. He hasn't said a whole lot, but the whistle and the glare has been enough to get his point across. Miami Hurricanes. Head coach from 79 to 83, just a class act and one of the better coaches to coach in college football the last couple of years as that'll be a sack for Norwood and Jean-Pierre of the Gamecocks. Stanley Doty also in on the play as we take another look, Josh. Eric Norwood, freshman, just <laughs> slipping that running back. And uh, coming through, and this is what a lot of these young guys need, Mike. They need, they need this confidence. They need this booster for them going into the six-game SEC stretch. Florida Atlantic on to punt the football for the seventh time tonight. Mike O'Neill, high spiraling kick, bounces and rolls dead at the 25-yard line. What could be the final drive of the night for Carolina, as we're told now, three minutes, 17 seconds left in this ball game. As another carry for Taylor Rank, his helmet popped off. Let's hope he's okay. That's always a scary sight when a guy's out there without a helmet. And you can tell he's feeling the pain, but he'll be happy to know he has surpassed the 100-yard mark. Taylor Rank, this is a great story, 15 carries, 101 yards. The guy came in without a single carry. And in his first game, 100 yards. And that's a sign of a guy that's had a busy night. No shoe, no helmet, and probably not much gas left in the tank either. No, we talked about Taylor being such a tough individual. Well, I had forgotten that Taylor was involved in the ultimate fighting uh, before he came to college. So that right there, I don't know if anybody, if you have seen that. I've seen it. But you have to be a, 
a tough man. Got to be a little crazy, too. Yeah, that, that too. Those combinations are kind of good for a running back. Let's see, 15 rushes for 101 yards. Well, well earned, though. I think his uh, night is done. 101 yards. He can take the other cleat off. <laughs> Those inflated pads, yeah. whatever else he's wearing. That's a great story. Taylor Rank, 101 yards tonight. Mike Davis, incidentally, 13 carries, 62 yards. So the Gamecocks, for the first time in a while, getting something going on the ground. And just as I say that, it, it had been like two plays without a penalty. Dead ball so. foul. False start. Number 78, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's uh, Justin Sorensen, one of three Canadians on the roster. And uh, Josh, uh, still questions on that offensive line. Yeah, there's, as you can see, the coach doesn't put up with very much. And uh, Justin coming on out of the game. But you've got to be disciplined, especially on the offensive line. Um, they got to get their act together. You know, this is the fourth game of the year. Gamecocks, I believe, lead the SEC in Canadians with the lead. Mike Davis off right tackle. Pretty good room to run there. And a solid game. A couple yards shy of a first down. Mike Davis racking up his yard total now. And uh, the Gamecocks overall have amassed 461 yards of offense. Mike Davis just catching the ball right here and going. Uh, had a lot of grass to work with around the right side. Tonight he's got 14 rushes for 75 yards and one TD, but I will say one thing. I think that he has come through to tonight and proven that he can be the back that he was last year. It's uh, Paul Hale getting the reception there. He's a, a walk-on wide receiver from the local high school here in Columbia. It's at Lexington High, kind of uh, following in the footsteps of one Chris Clark, who was a, a walk-on. Of course, he played quarterback at Lexington High School and went on to a pretty solid career. Third down and one. That stat pretty much tells the story. Domination tonight for Carolina. Here's a cutback run by Mike Davis. All kinds of room up the middle. That's when Mike Davis is at his best. If you can get him a hole between the tackles, he's going to do some damage. That's right. You know, Corey Boyd is more your guy that's going to break two or three tackles if he has to at the line of scrimmage and turn nothing into something. But Mike Davis here getting it done up front by the offensive line and great blocks by Pavlovic and the other offensive lineman to get Mike Davis a, uh, a good game. And it looks like that might have been the final play. Again, they're keeping time on the field. Steve Spurrier says, just let it run. We're done. Thanks for coming. Enjoyed it. And a convincing victory for the South Carolina Gamecocks. A much needed convincing victory. 45 to 6. Your final score, Josh. Well, I wouldn't be able to walk away at ease unless I said something like Sidney Rice. And that man right there, record breaking night for him. Those two coaches, two of the 12 active coaches in college football to win a national title, shaking hands at midfield, a lot of respect for one another. And, you know, give Florida Atlantic credit. They came in here, got an early touchdown, fought hard. But the Gamecocks and Sidney Rice just too much tonight. Again, the final score of the Gamecocks, 45. The Owls, 6. And you're watching CSS.